is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father of all. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel, 18 verses 1 through 4, 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die again. They shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25, 1 through 8. We will read the psalm responsively by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let the God be Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treasures be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and the state of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, 2, verses 1 through 13. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, 
being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and rejoice in our God with the gospel sequence hymn, number 470. We'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and the third verse after. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had 
two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you that tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord. In the name of the living, ooh, in the name of the living. This battery pack is out, so it, it goes on, then goes off, so Father Charles is getting a replace. I expect him to come in like the Energizer Bunny with symbols clashing and so forth. It is grand to be with you this morning <clears throat> and to share with you in the breaking of the bread and the blessing of the cup and to be together on this day of confirmation and reception as we all renew our baptismal covenant. Listening to that gospel, we learn that putting a spin on things is not by any means a 20th or 21st century um, uh, attribute that it goes all the way back to, well, if we answer this way, it will end up sounding like we're condemning Jesus for that, but if he answers the other way, then it'll make us look like something else is going on, so let's just say we don't know. It helps put into context the eternal questions that we are asked that go far beyond what is superficial and invite us to go very deep into our hearts and into our faith. <clears throat> when I was a high school student, to me Saturday morning meant one thing, sleep. After five grueling days of school and a day before getting up early on Sunday to go to church, Saturday, to me, was clearly meant <clears throat> to be a day of sleep. I was sure that Sabbath was Hebrew for sleeping in. When I was a high school student, Saturday morning meant one thing to my father, chores around the house. And let me be more precise, chores that only his older son could carry out. And further, it was absolutely necessary to begin the day of chores as early as possible. Thus, my father and I celebrated the following liturgy most Saturday mornings. 
I would hear my father's footsteps as he descended the stairs to my bedroom door. He would enter, none too quietly, and I would pretend to be asleep. In a voice that was a cross between a football cheer and the sing-song of a drill instructor, he would boldly proclaim, Everybody up! Let's go! As a teen, I found his enthusiasm disgusting. Next in the liturgy came intense shaking of the allegedly sleeping sun. And then, in the liturgical sense, would come the dismissal as the theme of today's work was announced. Today, we are going to dot, dot, dot. If it was a good day, if I was lucky, I was told that I was going to mow the half-acre yard as he was cutting weeds. But the news I feared most <clears throat> was the announcement that I had to split firewood, but first at least one tree in our small forest needed to be felled. I was at an age when I was not asked to carry out this work, I was told. But I still managed to show my displeasure by getting dressed slowly or working half-heartedly at my task, lest I finish too quickly and then be given another one. And that was always a problem for me. When I completed my chores satisfactorily and in a timely manner, I was never sure if it would be rewarded and given the rest of the day off or simply be given more work to do until it got dark. Looking back, perhaps I didn't want to carry out my father's wishes because I was rebelling in some fashion. And I certainly didn't understand that as a member of the family, I shared responsibilities for some household chores. But over the years, most of all, I came to realize I had no clue that what my father was really saying by giving me chores was that he needed me. He wasn't trying to make my life miserable. He wasn't punishing me by giving me work to do. He needed me. Or else some of the work would not get done. Jesus told a parable about a father who said to his two sons, go and work in the vineyard today. We aren't told that the father had to wake up these two or that the sons were teenagers who preferred to sleep in. But because the father says that he needs the two to work in the vineyard, the setting is most likely at the beginning of the day. Now, perhaps each had made other plans for the day. But in any case, in response to the father's directions, the first said, no, I won't go, then did. While son number two said, sure, I'll go, and then did not. At least one facet of this parable concerns the struggle that always goes on once we say yes to God. For the first son, at some point, his no became a yes. As the day progressed, for reasons one can only guess, he changed his mind. Maybe he spent some of the day not following his father's direction, but eventually ended up working in the vineyard. The second son who said yes never made it to the vineyard. Ever had a day like that? You start out with a set calendar or list of things to do and end up nowhere near where you planned. Sometimes for good reasons and sometimes for reasons less than noble. You end up not doing what you said you would do. I know I have. 
If the parable were only, though, about the struggles we go through to live up to our promises, quite honestly, that'd be a pretty wimpy parable. Very un-Jesus-like. The lesson is not simply that though neither son is a perfect model, the first son is the better one to imitate. But here in this parable, Jesus, like a famous cook, like one you have right here in Paducah, kicks it up a notch or two and goes on to identify that the two sons remind him of some of the folks he encounters daily. By this point in his ministry, the religious leaders are following Jesus closely, and Jesus, being as wise as a serpent, is watching them closely as well. Likewise, because Jesus has been spending time talking and eating with prostitutes and tax collectors and all sorts of sinners, all those on the outside of the religious community, Jesus has watched those people closely too. In this parable, Jesus pronounces that those who have never said ritually how much they love God and the law often live more righteous and caring lives than the religious leaders he has so far encountered. Enough of saying with your lips you love and serve God. Say so with your attitudes and actions and lives. <clears throat> Jesus may be saying something powerful about how a no that we first speak can later be transformed into a yes. In my life, I have changed my mind and heart about a group of people that I thought probably were sinners and not as worthy of God's love and favor. And luckily, by God's grace, I saw how that was a sin and I needed to repent. With this parable, our Lord may be challenging us as the church to be mindful that a no spoken at one point in the church's history may at some later time become a yes. Despite our struggles and our lethargy and the other concerns which sidetrack us, this parable is grace. It teaches that it is never too late to change a no into a yes and live accordingly. And finally, from this parable, let us note where the sons were asked to go and work in the vineyard when today for matthew throughout his gospel the vineyard is the world and the time is not later it is now for us also in this city in this county in this western half of the commonwealth the vineyard exists for us to go and serve, and the time is now. In our first lessons, the reading from Ezekiel calls us to repent, to reorder our lives, and say yes to serving God. The second reading from Philippians commands us to empty ourselves so completely that no inclination to say no to God can hardly be found. Though I do not hear my dad's footsteps coming to rouse me from my sleep anymore, we know that God's priority for us is to be a part of those who tend the vineyard. Together then, beloved, let us examine those things that cause us to metaphorically sleep in a bit, pull the covers over our heads, 
say no or say yes, but then not follow through. And then by God's grace, without any coercion, decide it's time to reorder and recommit. Jesus is calling us to serve, not to overburden us or test us in some way, is sending us to serve the world because he needs us. And that is my simple counsel to each of the candidates today. God needs you. God has been using you. And God will continue to use you. And to all of us who renew our own baptismal covenant shortly, God needs us all. And who you are now at this very moment is enough for the task God places before us. Who you are now is enough. God is well pleased with you. You are God's beloved. And you are precisely who God needs. Thus, in the words of my father, everybody up, let's go. Amen. If you give us a moment, we're going to switch a battery here, all right? <clears throat> Testing. One, two, three. Testing. All right. So some of you may not have heard the sermon, so I'll preach it again with this microphone on, if that's okay. <laughs> Will the candidates come and join us at the foot of the stairs here, please? <clears throat> the candidates will now be presented. I present to you Jim McElroy for confirmation. I also present these others Melanie Petter, Michelle Fowler, and Teresa McElroy to be received for this communion. All right, I'm gonna have you all come up here a little closer and just form a line across the way here. <clears throat> I have two questions to ask the candidates that's printed there in your bulletin. We have some very good Episcopalians who are sitting way in the back, all right? And I want to make sure that they can hear your responses to these questions, okay? Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. I do. Okay, we can do better than that now, all right? <laughs> One more time. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. I do. do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. And with God's, God's grace, I will I follow, follow him, him as, as my, my Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Thank you all very much. Would those who are able please stand because I have a question to ask the whole congregation. And I'd like you to think about the response before liturgically I ask you this question. You're about to promise to do all in your power to support these persons. What will that look like? How will you support them? In prayer, in friendship, in being in relationship and calling them into the good work that's done and by listening to the things they bring to this community. Think about how you will manifest the promise you're about to make. And now they have their backs to you. So in a good, strong voice, I ask you to reply. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? 
Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. O oh Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world to witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fulfillment of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now the congregation may be seated for the laying on of hands with this understanding, please. We do this together. I perform the laying on of hands and say the prayer, and at the end, you say amen, so be it. That is my prayer. This is the very first way that you show your support for these candidates. And to tell you I'm serious about it, if your response isn't strong enough, I'm going to make you stand up, all right? But this is the way to show how we are one body in this place. So. Jim McElroy for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant, Jim, with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hold your hands for you. Melanie, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Michelle Fowler for reception. Michelle, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Teresa McElroy for reception. Teresa, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Now, if there's anyone who has felt a particular nudge at this point, like everybody up, let's go, I would like to come forward to have a prayer of reaffirmation with me as the bishop and to receive a blessing. You are invited to do that at this time. Then would those who are able please stand for this concluding prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask these good folks to turn and face the congregation here for a moment. These folks are likely not new to you. They've been in this place, praying, working, and helping to bring forth the reign of God in, throughout the ministry of this place. And yet at the same time, the commitment they make this day makes Grace Church a stronger parish. And when Grace Church is stronger, our diocese is stronger, the church of God is stronger, and if you listen closely, you can hear the gates of hell shaking right now with these new servants. Would you please join me in thanking them and welcoming them for their commitment? <laughs> Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Please be seated. Have uh, some announcements. Uh, just like to thank you, Bishop, uh, for coming and joining us on this special day. I'd like to congratulate uh, Jim, Teresa. Melanie and Michelle on this very special day. It's been a, they've been in preparation for this day for over a year. So we are so, well, not quite a year, nine months. That's right. And so we've been, uh, in, it's been great to be able to have you come and join us this, this, at this time. And at this time, I'd also like to thank Jim uh, Patton, our choir. They, aren't they sounding wonderful today? It's just beautiful. They did such a great job in blessing us and these candidates, uh, now parishioners of our Grace Episcopal Church. I'd also like to thank uh, the Altar Guild uh, who helped prepare our service for today and our vestry. The altar flowers are in memory uh, from Beatrix Petter today in memory of Frederica and Bob Petter. 
the loose offering is going to be given to the bishop's discretionary fund. And if you'd like to help, as the bishop helps a tremendous amount of people throughout the diocese and in different congregations with his discretionary fund, with those in need and those others uh, as well. So your generosity would be greatly appreciated. Please join us uh, in thanking Sally Proctor and the vestry uh, for organizing our reception in honor of these wonderful uh, candidates, these confirmands and receivers of God's grace today. Please join us afterwards with our bishop as well uh, in the parish hall. Uh, due to fall break happening this week, on this coming Wednesday, we'll have no uh, activities with uh, no potluck, no godly play, no adult education, and no choir practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I might get a rise out of them for that. And, uh, and so thank you uh, for all of you for coming and joining us in this wonderful celebration today. But there's still one more thing. We have a very special guest. No, I'm sorry, it's not you, Bishop Terry. We have a very special guest, a parishioner, that we are honoring today. Her birthday is this Tuesday, I believe. Jenny Young is with us this morning. She will be a young lady at 98 years of age. Yes. I would like to say a little special birthday prayer over with and pray with Miss Jenny at this time. And if you would please join us in this prayer as well. I'm just back up. You go ahead. I'll oh, start here. So. <laughs> oh, holy and wondrous God, we thank you for this wonderful woman of God who has blessed this congregation for so many years. Bless her as she continues the life of faith and love for this community and for the people she loves in her family. We pray in thanksgiving for her care from her daughter Barbara and her other children. We thank you for her caretakers, but we also especially give thanks, O oh Lord, for her dedication to the vineyard. May you bless her as she celebrates her birthday. And for all those who celebrate birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week, we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless this woman of God this day. Thank In your name, amen. amen. Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. A privilege. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations, Jenny. <clears throat> you. So, again, a joy to be with you all and to just follow up on the uh, most gracious words of Father Charles about this discretionary fund. Um, every time there is a disaster in the Commonwealth, every time there is something that happens in a local congregation's community, every time something emerges that we maybe have no connection to, but it is our duty because they are part of our vineyard to reach out, we do that. We also respond throughout the needs of the broader Episcopal Church and the Anglican Communion. You have helped provide transportation in parts of Africa for schools that are being built. You have helped reach out in the midst of, of wildfires and um, in Hawaii where devastation ruined churches and as congregations, though the church still lives on the way that we reach out. And you have been generous because we reach out because at a time when tornadoes Ravage this part of our commonwealth, the whole church reached out to us so that we could be a blessing to others. So on behalf of those that you will help with any gift you make to the discretionary fund or go to the website and make a contribution that way, I thank you so very much for your generosity. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer C as printed in your bulletin. We offer this Eucharist to the glory of God in thanksgiving for the life of his Son who comes to us in the sacrament of his body and blood. We pray in thanksgiving for those confirmed and received on this day. And we pray for all of us as we, as, as we have renewed our baptismal covenant to go forth into the vineyard and proclaim with our lives the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you joining our voices with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. We'll have communion under, uh, with the wafer, the blessed bread of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the common cup to drink from, or in tinction cups to drip dip your wafer into the consecrated wine. We also have gluten-free wafers as well if you are in need of it. Please let the bishop or myself know of your need. All are welcome.
For the Eucharist we have received, let us give thanks. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace and courage to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and power to perform the marvelous works of God. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.